Hello, it's Arbitrary Larry here with another LEGO Let's Build. Today we're going to be building the LEGO Slave 1. This is set number 75060. It's part of the Ultimate Collector Series. I'm quite excited about this one, seeing that the Slave 1 is one of my favorite ships in the Star Wars series, and Boba Fett is one of my favorite characters, because he's so awesome. Uh, the set is 1,996 pieces, so it's quite large. And unlike most of the Ultimate Collector series that LEGO puts out, this one is done to minifigure scale, which is quite unique and makes it all the more awesome. It has some of the new redesigned minifigures that we're going to take a closer look at later. But let's take a look at the outside of the box quickly. So here, of course, is the front see the sides of the box, uh, the back, and the other side, we'll look at the bottom quick. There we go. And then here's the top, showing the minifigures that are included. And then it shows the dimensions of the ship at 17.7 inches long at the base, and then of course it's uh, 7.4 inches. Alright, get our trusty knife to open up the box at one end, and we're just going to dump it all out. Oh, there's a bag that just fell on the floor. Pick it up. So, as we can see, first off, there all the bags are numbered, making it easy to sort through them all. Bag number 12, 9, quite a few. Looks like we got some decals here for the ship, I guess. Let's take a look at the instruction booklet quick, and then we'll switch to the time lapse and start building. So, quite a large book here. And we'll probably take a closer look at the instruction manual later. But anyways, let's get started on the time lapse and I'll be right back with ya.
Alright guys, it's completed. Before I show you the model and the minifigures from this set, I wanted to show you briefly the instruction manual. Now instead of just going, here you go guys, here's the instruction manual, here's how to build your set, they actually added a little touch to it that I personally enjoyed in uh, this model. Um, in the first couple pages, they kind of give you a little bit about the set that you're building. Here's uh, information about the Slave One itself from the movie. In the next page, we see like some sketches from the movie, uh, the actual model uh, that was used on the set. Um, here we have the technical specifications of the set. It has the length, width, height, depth, speed, etc. of the Slave One. And then this next page I particularly enjoyed. Read through this, enjoyed it. It's the uh, Meet the Designer. It's a Q&A with the designer of this set. A lot of interesting information here about how long it took him to do, uh, design it, what he used to design it, like uh, the program that he used also. It has here, tells us that they actually created a special brick for this set, the windscreen because they didn't have it in the 8 brick wide windscreen so it was specifically created for this set and a lot of interesting information in here if you uh, do decide to get this set I definitely suggest reading through this so now let's take a look at uh, the model itself but before I turn to the model actually I would like to show off the minifigures so the first one we have here is the Bespin Guard so we see the front of him with the printing on the shirt and the back. This is a, this version of the Bespin Guard is exclusive to this set, so that's cool. So we got him, and we also got, in addition to him, the Stormtrooper. Very detailed Stormtrooper. So we see the front printing. Then the back. They added these minifigures so you could reenact the scenes from the movie if you so desire. And we'll take his mask off and we see we have a face. He has a very angry face on him. Now we have Han Solo in Carbonite. But this is not just brick Carbonite. Turn around to the back and we have Han Solo himself, frozen. And you can easily unfreeze him. He comes out. So here we see Han Solo in front of him. And we have a little bit of printing on his shirt. The pants are plain and no printing on the back. We also get with Han Solo two faces on him. So here's the front, or the first one, and then we also get this face here. His hair is falling off of the place. There you go. And then, of course, we see how he has the arm holds so you can click him right back into the carbonite just like so and he's ready for transport in the sleeve one now we're moving on to the star of the show Boba Fett this has got to be one of the most detailed minifigures I've seen you see a lot of detail in his uh, shirt and uh, pants here. You got the cape on this side also, um, his jetpack. And this may not seem like a major feature, but this is huge here, the arm printing. Like I say, it may not seem like much, but in 2003 they released a Boba Fett. Uh, the Boba Fett version there had also had arm printing. And that is one of the most rare and sought-after uh, minifigures 
one of the most expensive minifigures out there. So we finally got another Boba Fett, also with arm printing. And while this version of Boba Fett is still in production, it still is a very valuable minifigure. They released a brand new set here in 2016 that had a Boba Fett and everything was exactly the same as this one. A much cheaper set and it was freezing in carbonite. I can't remember her name, sorry guys. But uh, he is exactly the same as this guy except no arm printing. And we can move his head and here is his face. Focuses. There you go. There you go, guys. Now we'll move on to the slate book. Well, here it is in the landing mode. It's quite a large model, as you can see. It fills up the entire frame, making it hard to film. It's also quite a heavy model. I just had to weigh it to see how heavy on my scale. And it comes in about four pounds. But even though it's a large model and quite heavy, when you pick it up, move it around and stuff, it doesn't feel fragile. It feels very sturdy. It doesn't feel like it's gonna fall apart, which I thought was really awesome about this set. So we see here a lot of dark red on the base of the model and as we move the set around we see a lot of stickers here on the top as well as we see some of the decals the stickers on the side here and on the wings we have the turrets which they move together like so I also like this uh, the color on the model and I had to look it up I don't remember seeing this color when playing with Lego as a kid and it is a rare color it's sand green and it was introduced in year 2000 with the Statue of Liberty model but it is indeed a very rare color now as we move on We'll take a look at the hatch in which Han Solo goes. And we see how it opens up here. I was looking for Han Solo, but I think he might be in here. Yes, I left him in here. And as you can see, there's a hook. Maybe I'll give you some light. Kind of hard to see. There we go. Is that better? So we see here a hook on the door which he snaps off from. It's like so. And that's there so that he can easily come in and out and he won't get lost inside the model. So that was a nice feature that was added. But if you do lose Han Solo within the model, they have on the bottom here, I'm trying to keep this in frame, a emergency hatch right here on the bottom so if you do lose him in here you can get him out by shaking him shaking the model and getting him out that way here of course is the base extremely detailed I was glad to see that they didn't even overlook the base in designing this model we also have these uh, clear pieces here that makes it easy to pick up and slide around but according to the Q&A in the instruction manual it actually added yet another purpose it made it so that it appears like it's hovering when in landing mode which is cool now on to the cockpit we see we have a couple stickers on the windscreen it pops out like that. You see in here we have the seat which will go between land, uh, flying and landing positions. These control panels are our stickers. 
Whereas this one and this one down here are printed action. And we also have an extra gun for Boba Fett, which clips in right here. And then we have another one over here, which you can't see, which I'll turn as you can. Where his other gun will clip in. I'll show you Boba Fett in the seat. See, here's his gun. And then, like I said before, this is one to one to minifigure scale. So, this is actually the size Boba Fett is compared to the Slave One, which is really awesome. back into uh, light mode. I'll also show you the turrets on the side. These pop out. Which we see some guns on the side here. Then it also has the same on the other side. Just like that. So here is the stand for the slave one. We see the placard and no. I'll see if you can get focused. Here we go. So if you want to pause it to read that, you can. It gives you a little bit of information about uh, the slave one. And this will also come off from here and you can remove these bricks and display the plaque on this side if you so desire. I'll show you how to put it on the stand. You can slide it in, there you go, right there. Slips right in like that. There is the slave one displayed in flight mode. I am completely stoked about having this model in my small but ever glowing collection. It's a great display piece, and as you can see, it's beautiful you have some awesome minifigures in this set it's just so cool and I tell you guys if you are a Lego fan or you are a Star Wars fan and you have $200 just go out and buy this set if you're making a decision between say I don't know paying rent or buying the set buy the set you won't regret it I promise you once your landlord sees how awesome this set is, he will completely understand. Well, that's it for today. I have another video that I'm working on right now. Hopefully, I'll have it up on my channel next month. So, please subscribe so you don't miss that. Also, give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I thank you so very, very much for watching. You are all super, super awesome. I will see you in the next one. Take care.